Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Things are definitely turning quite interesting in the world of weather at the moment, especially for cold and snow fans, and that's because we've got an increased risk of wintry weather in the next kind of week and a half, two weeks, that I'll be covering in this video. So kind of starting off with the broad picture at play, we now are almost certain that we're going to have high pressure setting up to the north uh, of us, especially across kind of the North Atlantic into parts of Greenland, Iceland and Northern Europe. As you can quite see, uh, clearly see here on the pressure anomaly chart. Now what that does is it brings in a cold northerly kind of northeasterly airflow from about Tuesday um, as we get a low clear to the east of us from basically Tuesday onwards into December. So we do have now confidence on uh, a cold air mass being in place over the UK and Ireland through this period. As you can see on the temperature map, you can see there we've got that cold air shown being over the UK and Ireland pretty much all the way into December when uncertainty starts to increase again. So we've got good confidence on that, but a potential kind of complicating factor, especially with regards to any snow risk, is these low pressure systems uh, that you can see to the south of us. They're going to be taking a track uh, towards northern Europe. And as they move up from the south towards the cold air mass, they bring the risk of potentially some sort of snow risk developing across the UK. So there's one low that pushes in, as you can see, Thursday, Friday time. We'll talk about that very shortly. And then possibly another one, uh, kind of Sunday, Monday, the risk of another low. But that's a lot lower confidence, especially into December, the confidence decreases. So we're kind of focusing on the next kind of week first. Um, <clears throat> Looking at more of the specifics now, we have kind of three um, distinct kind of snow risks um, which will or chances for snow which we'll be looking at. Starting with the first one now, that is from this low that I just showed you here, moving in around Thursday and then into Friday. Now we've seen a quite interesting trend uh, on the models in the last, sorry just clearing that, uh, we've seen a quite interesting trend on the models in the last 24 hours or so. This right here is the European 12 o'clock run from uh, yesterday, valid for 9 o'clock on Thursday. And you can see the uh, broad pattern was to have cold air across the northern half of the UK and Ireland, but then <clears throat> across the south we had a kind of um, unorganised broad low pressure system. <clears throat> sorry which brought some less cold air in and basically was just causing rain and cold rain uh, across this part during Thursday. Now there's been a significant trend here uh, where essentially we've seen that low really develop properly, uh, wrap up, and now it brings in much cold air further south. As you can see here, the difference is quite clear. This would be cold enough for snow and also potentially it brings the risk of precipitation bumping into that cold air and also causing snowfall. So there is some issues with this particular risk because if I show you something called the Dalmatian plot, uh, this is basically a chart of all the um, different possible, just kind of by the way, focusing on this area here. This is a chart where all the different dots um, represent different possible positions of our low pressure system. Uh, and this is by the way valid for Thursday at lunchtime. And then all the different colors represent different possible strengths. So the kind of um, blue and green colors are deeper lows and the kind of darker blue and purple colors are weaker lows. So <clears throat> you can see there that there is a very large range in the possible positions for the low pressure on Thursday. And so while we have seen this trend to a more organized and snow conducive setup, still does not mean we can really say with much certainty on any snow threat at the moment because as you can see here we have a l very wide kind of um, range where the low could be and also note how there's a lot of different strengths that the different models have um, the low to be as well and just kind of visually showing you this um, with the actual models uh, to look at the different scenarios it's worth just kind of taking these with a grain of salt at the moment because they're this these charts are low resolution their extended range and snow is always having a kind of factor of uncertainty uh, on top of these kind of uncertain lows but you can see the GFS does develop this low quite fairly rapidly uh, not quite to kind of rapid uh, cyclogenesis standards but still a fairly rapid deepening down to around 970 millibars there uh, by Thursday morning and what that does because you've got a stronger pressure gradient at those black lines are kind of much closer together it's really dragging in colder air on the northern side and just cold enough that this precipitation in this particular scenario does turn to snow but to be honest 
this is looking fairly unlikely and while it would be very exciting and it would bring some significant snowfall on thursday to the south if i show you the other models for example the icon model you can see it has a much weaker kind of flatter low as you can see there the pressure gradient is not as strong um but the precipitation is still there however the cold air is not quite as intensely wrapped into the system you can see slightly lighter colors here than if i compare that to the gfs um, which brought those kind of darker negative five that we're generally looking for negative five um, at this height which is around 1.5 kilometers um, also known as 850 hectopascals but we're generally looking for um, negative five on this chart for snow conducive air and you can see the icon just doesn't quite have that and we do get a little bit of snow across uh, central southern england and the southwest there but mostly it's just for rain uh, so that's another kind of basic illustration of the uncertainty and so while snow is looking unlikely or a widespread snow like the gfs is showing because we've got this very wide range of possible scenarios I would say it's just worth keeping an eye on because if this does happen where models start to converge more on a deeper system uh, which seems personally unlikely i think the gfs is overdoing the deepening um, but if that does happen then there would be a heightened snow risk so at the moment uh thursday's threat this looks to be mainly hill snow um and rain but like i just said it's worth keeping an eye on just in case that changes um uh, taking a look at the european model just to give you another sense um this is also another possible scenario where you do get maybe some snow during the early hours um <clears throat> across central southern areas but nothing significant like the gfs i think the gfs is really on the extreme end of that but like i just said repeating myself here but worth keeping an eye on just in case so that's one possible oh, oh by the way this could change significantly over the next few days in terms of weather kind of weather like weather kind of relatively for the weather this is still very long range away so a lot could change and that's kind of the first risk out of the way the second risk which is a much more certain risk is going to be from snow showers so zooming in on the uk and ireland uh here on the european model chart you can see kind of ignoring this low to the south for now because we just discussed that kind of draw your attention to northern areas and eastern areas of scotland also the irish sea as well but that looks like more like sleet than snow to me but you can notice all these kind of blobs of purple color and that is showing snow showers which could be heavy um and possibly frequent as well <clears throat> so there's perhaps the more certain risk for something significant snowfall wise and basically starting on wednesday uh, as you can see here we're going to draw in much colder air as you can see uh, those kind of dark blue purple colors showing up in the north and northeast half of the uk showing where we've got that much colder air and what happens as that colder air overspreads the milder north sea is we get a difference in temperatures that causes instability <clears throat> we get showers developing and those showers fall out of snow so because it's not associated with any sort of low pressure system this is kind of just something inherent to cold air masses uh, moving over the north sea at the winter we have much better confidence on this and if i show you uh, all the various different models so gfs uh, you can see same thing there heavy snow showers across north and northeastern areas uh, and same thing uh, icon model you can see also showing the same thing so well the nature of snow showers is that they are hit and miss so you cannot pinpoint exactly where when they will be especially at this range what we can say is that across the northeastern coast of scotland so for example let me just kind of draw it out here so these areas northeast coast of scotland kind of following basically the east coast and into parts of northeast england uh there's basically anywhere within this black circle is at a fairly heightened risk for snow basically from the 30th um onwards and potentially depending on how uh far south the cold air gets for example if we get a european model scenario where we get a pretty cold air um, coming in from the northeast <clears throat> like that we could also see that risk eventually extend further south so maybe areas of england uh, and eastern england southern england are seeing snow showers as well into december but this is where the uncertainty is starting to increase so we can't really say exactly what's going to happen with that but at least kind of wednesday into thursday and friday across the northern half of the uk northeast especially that's the second snow risk that we have to monitor now the third and most uncertain snow risk is the risk from very small areas of kind of low pressure and energy now a lot of times in these kind of northerly and northeasterly setups we get small localized areas of rising air and energy this causes localized areas of precipitation 
and have in the past caused localised areas of significant snow. In fact, the December 11th event uh, last year, which brought as much as kind of 15 centimetres to areas around southeast England, was from one of these very small, unpredictable low pressure systems. And because they're so small, like I just said, they are unpredictable, and we usually only have an idea on where, when, how strong uh, they're going to be within one to two days, sometimes even less. But as an example, and don't take this as a forecast because it will almost certainly change within the next run. But this kind of thing here um, on the GFS is an illustration of those kind of events. You get a small, very localized um, low pressure system, but it does bring um, enough kind of rising air to cause snow to fall locally. And you can see another one kind of here. You can see another one here. So you kind of get the gist. They're very small. They're very, very uncertain. They're hard to forecast. Um, but where they do form, um, it basically kind of what I'm trying to say is that anywhere in the UK and Ireland under the cold air mass, especially from Thursday onwards, uh, so the shower risk is kind of from Wednesday onwards, but this is kind of Thursday, Friday onwards, is it's just worth monitoring the forecast because if one of these does pop up, it could cause snowfall. Um, <clears throat> and kind of a nice illustration of this is the GFS snow risk chart. So basically showing... Um, the percentage of the ensemble members which have falling snow at any one location and you can see quite nicely uh, it's illustrated here that on Thursday most of the UK is highlighted in some sort of colour there uh, as you can see I mean I think everywhere in the UK and Ireland is under some sort of colour so everywhere is at some risk of snow but <clears throat> in particular northern eastern areas are also seeing a slightly heightened risk so that's the kind of uh, much more uncertain but just kind of be aware in the back of your mind risk um, in terms of snow, it will be feeling cold as well. Uh, I don't have any temperature maps to hand, but if I just maybe kind of show you the German model, you can see we're likely to see um, cold nights, uh, sub zero quite widely, and also pretty cold days, some places not getting above zero. So, a proper wintry spell is appearing more and more likely. The snow risk is for the most part uncertain, but we have kind of three different scenarios which could bring snow, which I just mentioned in this video. So thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.